Hey, Steph listeners, hear about the latest trends in the travel industry with the brand USA Talks Travel Podcast. Right now, listen to special live from IPW interviews featuring U.S. Travel's Jeff Freeman. DMOs are at the heartbeat of U.S. Travel. Liz Bittner from Travel South. A lot of key gateway markets are back. L.A. Tourism's Adam Burke. We all win when we all partner together. Plus, brand USA's Stacey Melman and Jackie Ennis with international travel trends and Chris Thompson's farewell finale. I'm Mark Lapidus. Join us for brand USA Talks Travel on your favorite podcast platform. Brand USA Talks Travel. Good morning from Skift. It's Thursday, December 17th in New York City. For daily updates in your inbox, subscribe to the Skift Daily newsletter at skift.com slash daily. Support for this podcast and the following message come from TD Ameritrade. Everything's customizable these days. Your trading platform can be too. With Think or Swim, you can customize screeners, charting, and stock forecasts so the market is always tailored to you. You can get started at tdameritrade.com slash thinkorswim. And now here's what you need to know about the business of travel today. There is no end in sight for Cathay Pacific's troubles, as the Hong Kong-based carrier grapples with an almost complete collapse in passenger traffic. Its latest investor update further underscores just how bad Cathay has had it since before the pandemic even began, as the territory was roiled with political unrest for the year before COVID struck, writes Airline Weekly editor Madhu Anikrishnan. The carrier reported its November traffic was 99% down from 2019. Unit revenues were off 98%, and its passenger load factor hovered at 18%. Cathay had cut capacity by 91%. Cathay said it transported just over 1,200 passengers per day in November, or roughly four B777s worth of passengers. Next year doesn't look any better. Cathay Pacific expects to operate just 9% of its planned pre-COVID capacity in December and just 10% in January, down from the 34% average capacity it operated for most of the first half. Next, Sri Lanka won high praise in the initial months of the pandemic for its swift and strict action to contain the virus and for producing astonishingly detailed and unambiguous protocols to safely unlock the country to international leisure tourists on August 1st. Alas, that reopening has had to be shelved due to a spike in cases in July, then a second wave in early October that was traced to a garment factory near Colombo. Skift editor at large Raini Hamdi writes the country is now in final discussions to welcome back foreign tourists, even though there were 643 new cases on December 15th. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has a level four, the highest advisory, against travel to Sri Lanka. That said, Sri Lanka's COVID-19 death rate, 0.5%, is minuscule compared with 1.8% for the U.S. and 2.2% globally. The Bandar Anaka International Airport is likely to reopen from December 26th, initially for charter flights carrying predominantly Eastern European tourists and, if all goes well, normal flights could resume gradually, according to industry sources Skift spoke to in Colombo. Finally, we end on some intrigue involving one of the world's most visible tourism organizations. Controversy is brewing at the United Nations World Tourism Organization, UNWTO, over the upcoming election for a new secretary general to run the tourism agency from 2022 through 2025. Allegations had begun swirling weeks ago on the heels of Bahraini Sheikha Mai's historic candidacy that current UNWTO leader Zirab Polo Lekashvili might have purposely tightened the nomination and campaign time frame this year, a first in UNWTO history, to prevent any competition from hindering his chances to serve a second term. Mai would be the first woman ever to oversee the organization. Concerns over an unethical bending of the rules at the UN's tourism agency have now led to a restored decency in the UNWTO election global petition launched days ago by respected former Secretary General Taleb Rafai and his predecessor Francesco Frangiali, both of whom served at the UN's tourism arm for a combined 20 years, writes global tourism reporter Lebowit Lili Germa. For more travel stories, head to skiff.com. To find these stories and more insight into the business of travel, subscribe to the Skiff Daily newsletter at skiff.com slash daily. 
Ryan Smith listeners. Hear about the latest trends in the travel industry with the Brand USA Talks Travel Podcast. Right now, listen to special live from IPW interviews featuring U.S. Travel's Jeff Freeman. DMOs are at the heartbeat of U.S. Travel. Liz Bittner from Travel South. A lot of key gateway markets are back. L.A. Tourism's Adam Burke. We all win when we all partner together. Plus, Brand USA's Stacey Melman and Jackie Ennis with international travel trends and Chris Thompson's farewell finale. I'm Mark Flapitas. Join us for Brand USA Talks Travel on your favorite podcast platform. Brand USA Talks Travel.